really the bottom line is not very complicated, it just has lots of details to it. I like to go over the beginning. Uh, so I traveled in 2006 and 2009 with Interface Peace Builders, and I highly recommend going with them. It's a good way to get out for yourself in this situation. Um, so, what are some big myths that people have about the Israeli Palestinian conflict? Number one, have you heard this before? This is an ancient, unending conflict. This been, they've been doing that forever. You've heard that, right? Not true. Actually, this is a very modern conflict. It is a long standing modern conflict. It really starts to get going about 1900. It really happened in the past century. It is decades old. It does have one of the longest standing refugee problems, but it is not an ancient conflict. Another myth that this is a, a Jewish Muslim thing. Actually, there are religious dimensions to the conflict, but really the conflict is based on two rival nationalisms. You've got Israelis and Palestinians fighting over the same land. And that, if you have to put this conflict in a nutshell, it's two groups of people fighting over the same land. So how did this all come about? Um, I don't have my wonderful slideshow, so I can't show you my graphs that I've taken from some statistics. Um, before I get to how the background of this conflict, the of this conflict. But one, another myth that I like to uh, shatter is this idea that, oh, it's Palestinian violence is a big problem. All that Palestinian violence. Now don't get me wrong, yeah, Israelis are dying. But the Israelis that are dying are not in the same numbers as Palestinians. Palestinian fatalities are three to four times as many uh, as Israeli fatalities. Israeli fatalities really peaked about the time of 2002. This was the time when a lot of the suicide bombings and the buses. At the same time period, about three times as many Palestinians were dying in retaliatory attacks. Um, I can't give you an exact number, but a rough estimate for both the Israeli numbers and the Palestinian numbers about over a thousand Israelis have died. Although about six thousand Palestinians have died. About half of those have been innocent people who have not been involved in the fight. Particularly, this uh, violence came to a head in December 2008 to January 2009 in Gaza. Operation Cast Lead, which is an Israeli offensive. According to the Israelis, they were trying to stop rocket attacks. During Operation Cast Lead, 13 Israelis died. 13 too many. Any, any, that's what we all want, as Ty has pointed out. We want the, the killing to stop first, and then we want a just resolution of the conflict. 13 Israelis died. Three rocket attacks. Six were uh, Israeli security forces. And I believe four were actually Israelis who died in the friendly fire incident between Israelis. Some 1,387 Palestinians died. Of that, about 700 were civilians. So that's a factor of 100 to 1 fatalities. Violence is the problem, period. Violence begets violence. And we have to understand that violence, people dying on either side, is wrong. People don't understand how disproportionate this violence has been. So it's hard for us to understand why some of those Palestinians might want to fire rockets. Um, I, I can't judge it even though I want it to stop. I know all the violence has to stop in order to have a just resolution. So how did we get this situation? What are the origins going back 100 years? It really starts in Europe. The two main isms that caused the Israeli-Palestinian conflict originate from Europe. One of them is the problem of anti-Semitism in Europe. Uh, during the 1800s, Jews in Europe had a choice. Would they try to assimilate, or how are they going to try to fit into the societies? In Russia, that wasn't going to work at all. In the late 1800s, there were violent pogroms launched against the Jewish community in Russia. <coughs> Hundreds of thousands of Jews were killed in Russia, and uh, Jewish refugees fled west to Europe, to places like England or Vienna. Vienna actually saw a lot of refugees come in. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, how, how do we see refugees? How do we see immigrants? Especially people who are very poor, have nothing. We see them as poor and dirt. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm not advocating this at all. But we see these people come in, they're poor and they're dirty, and we tend to look down on these new immigrants. And these Jewish refugees coming into Austria particularly were looked down upon. 
So this gave rise to anti-Semitism in Europe. There was one man in, Austria, in Vienna, Austria, that particularly thought about these issues of should Jews in Europe assimilate or should there be another way? This man was named Theodore Herzl, a German Jew, playwright, scholar, intellectual, and later the German activist. Well, at first he considered assimilation, but when he saw mobs in Vienna throwing around saying stuff like kill the Jews, he decided assimilation isn't going to work. Shortly after that, he wrote a book in 1886 called Der Judenstadt, the Jewish state, where he reported the idea that Jews should have their own state. Forget trying to live with these other people who are going to persecute us, let's find our own state where we can be safe. The movement to create this new state is called Zionism, and in about 1897, the first Zionist conference held, and it declares we're going to create a homeland in Palestine. Where's Palestine? What's Palestine? Palestine, historically, is a historical name for a region in the Middle East. Uh, it was first named that by the Romans. It has seen many different empires and conquerors in thousands of years. And during this time, about 1900, the empire that was controlling this area of Palestine was the Ottoman Empire, a weak empire. Empire that's going into decline. That's going to be important later. So, what is Palestine like during this time? It is about 600,000 people live there. It's mainly an agrarian society. You could call it a backward society. It is almost completely uh, Arab culture. Uh, we talked a little bit about, it's not, when we talk about Palestinians, race, there's not really a racial element to the Arab because this has been a crossroads. You will see people of all different skin colors, uh, hair colors, and eye colors. So the culture is Arab, and, but the people are not necessarily fit into any racial category necessarily in these Palestinian people. 85% of them are Muslim in 1900. 10% of them are Christian. 5% of them are Jewish. This includes a small number of actual, this will mess with your mind, Palestinian Arab Jews. These are the native Jewish community who've been there ever since way back when and have adopted Arab culture but still practice the Jewish religion. And then you have a lot of Jews that have come in from the outside. For hundreds of years, Jews from the outside had to come in and to maintain a presence at the holy sites. A lot of Jews wanted to come in and die in the holy land, particularly Jerusalem and Hebron, where the tomb of Abraham is, are holy sites. Uh, but a very small population. This population increased dramatically, though, with the pogroms in Russia. There were waves of immigration. First, it was just tens of thousands of people coming in. The Jewish population was growing, and it's going to grow dramatically as Jews face persecution elsewhere. So this is our first uh, set of isms. Anti-Semitism in Europe drives Zionism, this movement to settle in Palestine, for Jews to settle in Palestine and create their own homeland. There's another ism, uh, imperialism, colonialism, whichever one you want to have. I had mentioned that the Ottoman Empire had been a failing empire. Britain and France were looking at the Ottoman Empire saying, okay, we're going to take over that land. It's going to be ours. So during World War I, they had secret agreements to do that. They also had a couple other agreements on 